The vestibular system is enticingly fascinating, mainly because of its complexity and because of its essence for our quality of life, even though the organs that make it possible are so small. The vestibular system basically operates through three reflexes, which are the vestibulo-ocular reflex, the vestibulo-colic reflex, and the vestibulo-spinal reflex. Each aims to stabilize our body, each aims to stabilize our eyes, and thus allowing us to stay in motion effectively. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about how the vestibulo-ocular reflex works, and uh, in order to do this, we're going to take a look at the vestibular organs, which are small organs inside the petrous part of the temporal bone. And we're also going to talk about how they mediate the vestibulo-ocular reflex. And we are going to talk about some relevant pathology, namely internuclear ophthalmoplegia. All right, so let's take a look at the vestibular organs. We have two vestibular organs, and each vestibular organ has five detectors. So let's take a look at the right vestibular organ. Two of the detectors are the statolith organs, labeled black. The statolith organs detect tilt and gravity. So when you lie down on your back, so let's say our vestibular monster is going to lie down on his back, it's the satellite organs that detect that you are lying down. Then we have the semicircular canals. We have three semicircular canals. In light green, we see the posterior semicircular canal. Darker green, we see the anterior semicircular canal. And in darkest green, we see the horizontal or lateral semicircular canals. Canal. Now these, they detect angular acceleration and rotation. So the anterior and posterior semicircular canal, they detect when you move your head up or down. And the horizontal semicircular canal detects when you move, move your head to the right or to the left. Um, now the horizontal, the semicircular canals, they are filled with fluid. and. Um, the detection of fluid motion is actually the basis for how they detect motion. So let's say you move your head to the right, like this. What's going to happen? When you rotate your head to the right, the endolymph inside the sem horizontal semicircular canal is going to move relatively to the left as a result of mass slowness. Rotate your head to the right, endolymph moves to the left. As a result, the endolymph is going to hit the hair cells in the cupula of the lateral semicircular canal. They're labeled in purple. And when the endolymph moves towards the cupula and activates the hair cells, or moves the hair cells, you're going to get a depolarization, and the vestibular nerve is going to fire. So when you rotate your head to the right, you're going to have ipsilateral activation of the horizontal semicircular canal. And the vertical semicircular canals, they work in a similar way. Now here I drew some lines to emphasize the symmetry between the anterior and posterior semicircular canals of the right and left side. Um, in orange, we see lines drawn through the posterior semicircular canals. So this line goes through the right posterior, and this line goes through the left posterior, and they intersect at a right angle. And the same can be said for the anterior semicircular canals, which intersect at a right angle. Now, how are these semicircular canals oriented? Um, Interestingly, all the semicircular canals, they lie in planes perpendicular to each other, as is emphasized by this gold box. So here we see the anterior, here's the posterior, and here's the lateral, or horizontal, and we see that each lies in a plane of this box. 
that's pretty interesting. Um, another thing that's interesting is that the anterior and posterior semicircular canals, they are vertical, so they are not in the horizontal plane, they're exactly in the vertical plane. As you can see here, there is no tilt, it's not like this, it's like this. And another thing that's interesting is that the horizontal semicircular canal, though it's called horizontal, it's not entirely horizontal. When you look at it, it actually makes an angle of 30 degrees to the transverse plane. So the horizontal semicircular canal has some vertical detection. One important function of the vestibular system is that it allows you to fixate your gaze on a point in distance even while you are rotating your head. This is done by the vestibular ocular reflex, which we will talk about in a minute. But now let's give you an example of gaze stabilization. The vestibular monster rotates his head to the right, but he can't keep his eyes off the ice cream. So while he is rotating his head, the eyes rotate to keep fixating on the ice cream. This is possible thanks to the vestibular system. All right, so what do we need to stabilize our gaze when we look to the right? How do we stabilize our eyes to the left, the ice cream? What we need is our left lateral rectus muscle to become active and our right medial rectus muscle to become active so that the eyes will move to the left. And in order to get that, we need to activate the left abductions nerve and to activate the right oculomotor nerve. On the contrast, we want the right abductions nerve to become inactive because we don't want the right eye to abduct. We want it to adduct. And we want our left oculomotor nucleus to become inactive because we don't want our left eye to adduct, we want it to abduct. All right, so we moved our head to the right. How does the left abductions nucleus become active? As we just said, when you rotate your head to the right, the right horizontal semicircular canal is going to become um, active because the endolymph is going to move relatively to the left and it's going to hit the hair cells in the cupula. As a result, the firing frequency of the vestibular nerve increases and so the vestibulocochlear nerve, the right vestibulocochlear nerve, activates the right vestibular nucleus and the right vestibular nucleus, what does it do? It activates the contralateral abductions nucleus and it inactivates the contralateral vestibular nucleus. As a result, what we're going to get is when the right horizontal canal becomes active, the right vestibular nucleus becomes active, the left abductions nucleus becomes active, while on the contrary, the left vestibular nucleus becomes inactive and the right abductions nucleus becomes inactive. As a result, what we're going to have is movement of our left eye to the left because the left abductions nucleus is active. Okay, so we've explained the movement of the left eye when you fixate on the ice cream. But how does the right eye move? How do we activate the right medial rectus? The answer lies in a long nerf, uh, neuron fiber tract that runs through the brainstem, and it's called the medial longitudinal fasciculus. The medial longitudinal fasciculus connects the uh, ocular nuclei together. So it connects the uh, abductions nucleus and the trochlear nucleus and the oculomotor nucleus. Now, when you rotate your head to the right, and so your left abductions nucleus becomes active, it is going to activate 
the right medial longitudinal fasciculus, here shown in dark blue. So the left uh, abducens nucleus activates the right medial longitudinal fasciculus, and this is going to activate the right oculomotor nucleus, here in purple, and so the right oculomotor nucleus is going to activate the right oculomotor nerve and it is going to activate the medial rectus muscle and so our right eye is also going to fixate on the ice cream. So in essence that's what the vestibular ocular reflex is. In summary we rotated our head to the right, our right horizontal canal became active, thus our right vestibular nucleus became active inactivating the left vestibular nucleus. The right vestibular nucleus then activated the left abducens nucleus. And the left abducens nucleus, it did two things. First, it activated our left lateral rectus muscle, so our left eye fixates on the ice cream. And at instantaneously, it activated the right medial longitudinal fasciculus thus activating the right oculomotor nerve so that the right oculomotor nerve can activate the right medial rectus. That's the vestibular ocular reflex. And now remember at the beginning of this vid video I talked about how the, uh, the semicircular canals mirror each other. This also applies here. When we rotate our head to the right, this right horizontal semicircular canal becomes active, but the contralateral semicircular canal becomes inactive. And so our left vestibular nucleus becomes inactive. And quite frankly, this system uh, works brilliantly. And of course, it helps us survive. And it, it, yeah, it, it just basically really improves our quality of life, which all the more emphasizes how horrible it is when this system goes awry in some pathology. So let's talk about pathology to this system. Now, some particularly interesting pathology is the internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Uh, ophthalmoplegia implies that the eyes aren't moving properly, and internuclear implies that there is a problem in the connection between the nuclei, i.e. the medial longitudinal fasciculus, the MLF. Um, in old people, uh, intranuclear ophthalmoplegia is usually the result of stroke, and it's usually unilateral. In young people, intranuclear ophthalmoplegia may be the result of trauma or uh, multiple sclerosis, which is a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system. And in multiple sclerosis, usually the uh, intranuclear ophthalmoplegia is bilateral. So the MLF is defect bilaterally. So what are the clinical signs? Let's say a patient has stroke and uh, therefore a defect in the right medial longitudinal fasciculus. What happens is you ask him to rotate his head to the right while fixating on you. And what will happen is the eye that on the side that you are rotating towards will lag behind while the left eye here will remain fixating on you. Why is this? Because the right MLF is defect, so when you rotate your head to the right, your right vestibular nucleus becomes active, activates your uh, left uh, abducens nucleus, causes your left eye to abduce, but your MLF is defect, so you cannot activate your right oculomotor nucleus, and so you cannot adduct your uh, left eye, or right eye in this case. Um, you ask the same patient, the same stroke patient, to rotate his head to the left while fixating on you. Rotate his head to the left while fixating on you, and there will be no problem. He will fixate normally. Because this is not dependent on the right MLF, this is dependent on the left MLF. Uh, in multiple sclerosis, on the contrary, whether you ask the patient to look to the left or to the right, the eye on the side that you are rotating towards will lag behind. So you ask him to rotate to the left, the right eye will abduce, but the left eye won't. You ask them to rotate their head to the right, the left eye will abduce, but the right eye won't. 
Please note that in this video, uh, the eyes are rotating after I rotate the entire body, but in reality, this mo movement occurs simultaneously. All right, that's it for today, folks. We talked about the vestibular system. We talked about the anatomy of the semicircular canals, about the nuclei, about how they drive the vestibular ocular reflex, which is essential for our quality of life. And we talked about some pathology that is relevant to the vestibular ocular reflex. I hope you learned a lot. I hope it was insightful. And I'll gladly receive your feedback. Good luck studying.